What's up everybody, Tommy Har with The Real Side of Real Estate. Today I'm gonna to take you step by step, whole process on how to evaluate a fix and flip deal. I'm gonna go through my deal analyzer, get all the way down to purchase price and show you guys how to make super accurate offers so you can stop wasting your time and start actually doing deals tomorrow. Let's get to it. All right, so before I start screen sharing here, I wanna tell you guys a few things that you need to have before you start even evaluating a deal. So I'm gonna evaluate this deal literally from my computer screen. So sometimes you don't even need to go to the property as long as you have the right things in place to be able to look at the deal. So number one, we're not even gonna look at purchase price right away. So if you're looking at a deal from a wholesaler, if you're looking at it from the MLS, if you're wherever you're seeing the deal from, or it's direct to seller, Purchase price should be almost the last thing you look at. Now it has to be somewhere within a ballpark so you're not wasting your time. But what we're gonna be doing is going all the way from the top, so ARV down to purchase price. So we're gonna look through about 150 pictures. We're gonna go step by step. We're gonna build a deal analyzer. We're gonna talk about money costs. We're gonna talk about holding costs. We're gonna talk about realtor costs and closing costs all the way down to your profit margin and then getting to your purchase price. Because without all of those things we just talked about baked in, you're gonna be spinning your wheels on making offers. So what we're gonna be doing is getting into all of that stuff. There's gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but I promise you it's gonna be packed with some amazing stuff. So let's get over to my computer screen right away and uh, let's kind of just jump right into it. So this property, the address is 3168 Mary Ave in Columbus, Ohio, 43204. Now we're already in contract on this one. I believe we actually closed this on Friday. Today's Wednesday, you can see on my screen. But I wanna get, go through everything that we are going through to build this thing out and to hopefully make some money on it. So first things first, I wanna go and, and match the auditor to Zillow. I, I comp with Zillow or PropStream. If you're in a city or state rather like Texas or Louisiana, uh, a non-disclosure state, there's gonna be a link on, in the show notes to PropStream. We use that for our wholesaling business. We also use it to comp properties down where they're non-disclosure. So this says this property is a three bed, two bath, uh, 1354 square feet. It says the, this is what the property looks like. This is a ranch style house, one car attached to garage. And we're gonna get into some of the components here in a minute. Um, let's, let's look here. So you wanna go to your local auditor site. So auditor site is where all the public record information is for everything real estate. Who owns it, when they bought it, um, all that stuff, what they purchased it for, all that stuff will be on your auditor because it's public record. 3168 Mary. So right now it is owned by these people here. They bought it in 2016, it says a $0 transfer price. So maybe it was an in-family transfer here. So it looks like that it's been in this family probably for a while, and um, which doesn't really matter for you. I would not get stuck on that stuff. But the big thing is you wanna look at is you wanna make sure that you're looking at the right things, especially when it comes to the next part, which is gonna be comping the property out. So this was built in 1957, which is a big piece we'll talk about here during the rehab. Finished area of 1354, three beds, one and a half baths. So over here, it says two baths on the, um, on Zillow, so you gotta make sure you're not comping with, two, with a full bath, you wanna go th three beds, one and a half baths and make that determination, right? It's very, very important. So now we know that the square footage is 1354 and if you're writing stuff down, I always try to have a sheet and I write down all the information. Okay, how many beds, how many baths, how big it is, all that stuff you need to have right in front of you as time goes on because the next thing we're gonna do is try and figure out what this thing's gonna be worth when it's done, it's called ARV. So after repair value, when this property, three bed, one and a half bath is fixed up. What is it gonna sell on the market? So I'm gonna head over to Zillow here. I'm gonna select houses because it's a single family house. I don't wanna look at duplexes. I don't wanna look at condos. I wanna look literally like for like on this property. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my parameters to 90 days or six months. I don't wanna go any farther than that because as markets change, you wanna make sure you're looking at things that have just sold. Okay, let's check it out. So I don't, I don't wanna go, and we'll have other videos on how to exactly comp, but Eakin right here is a pretty main road. I don't wanna go over Briggs. I wanna stay right in this pocket, if at all possible, or this pocket here, because once you start going over double-lined roads, you start getting into different neighborhoods. So micro markets are really, really important. 
But it looks like we have, so Mary Ave is right here. It looks like we have a bunch of sales that we can kind of look at and uh, take a peek at. So the first one I wanna look at is, I wanna look at the top sales. Three bed, two bath, 1400 square foot. Um, this house here is a ranch style house like ours. It does not have a garage. Now, I don't know if this comp was even here. Yeah, we didn't see this comp before. So this is a good comp. So they got the black door, they got the LVP floors. They probably have a bedroom here or a half bath. It looks like they might've converted a garage at one point, but it's nice and open. This to me looks like it's staged as a flip. I think this is also on a slab. We own one right on Vanderburg here as well. Um, that's the exact same house. So this is a three bed, two full bath, I'm assuming, because ours is as well. So you got a bathroom. Anytime they're not showing the shower surrounds, typically that means that the showers have not been super updated because if you spend a lot of money on tile, they're gonna be showing it. So this to me is a pretty basic, clean house, no garage. Three bed, two full baths. We gotta keep that in consideration, but there's no basement in this house. So if I was writing stuff down, I'd be writing it down right now, okay? Three, 942 Vanderburg, sold for 246. Renovated, not high end, but renovated enough. Okay, now we've got 818 Stephen Drive West, 1500 square foot, three bed, two bath, ranch style, just like ours, remember. We've got uh, stone siding, vinyl, vinyl windows, updated roof. This one, not, as, not really all that renovated either. Now, it might be renovated for some people, it's kind of ugly to me, but you got some decent cabinets, you got granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, um, you got some shiplap on the ceilings. This is a, this is a cool house for some. You got old carpet. I mean, this is, to me, dated, but this thing sold for 270 grand, so you can't ignore the fact that this is probably a comp. You got tile shower surrounds. You got a finished basement, so that's probably where the next bathroom is. So you got a half bathroom in the basement. So they finished out the basement, and that's where they're getting a lot of square footage, and you got a two car uh, and a pool, okay? A pool definitely plays a part. I don't know how much I'd be lying to you guys to say if I knew like, oh, a pool adds 20 grand. To me, a pool adds more liability, it adds more upkeep, it adds, uh, kind of, it diminishes value a little bit for me. Okay, now we got this one on bins. Now this one is a little bit bigger, sold for 290 about six days ago. Let me see when this was built. Okay, 1946, about the same. So a little bit bigger. So you got basic finishes, very basic finishes. You got laminate countertops. Those are probably Lowe's cabinets. Uh, carpet, looks like old carpet. No garage. Oh, two car detached garage, okay. To me, that's a, that's a comp too. But let me try and get one more that's hopefully gonna be perfect. So this one, South Brinker, same specs here. 245, got an older roof. You got these old awnings. You got nice hardwood floors. I mean, this thing's dated. So to me, maybe look at one more and then we'll look at things that are pending. But this to me, we've got a good amount of, of things here to figure out what this thing is probably gonna be worth when it's all said and done. So this one sold for 240, not all that renovated with a garage. I don't wanna go up here, I wanna kinda of stay down in this area. Okay, this one's renovated, Briggs, smaller. Briggs is also a main road, I know. One car detached garage, or one car attached. This seems like it's probably a flip because they got the virtual staging going on. You got the gray, you got all that stuff. So you got this one that's flipped on more of a main road, finished basement, decent finishes. You got a bedroom down there. This one to me is definitely a comp. So this one's got, was there a bathroom in the basement there? Let's see. No, there was not. So one and a half baths, looks like this is the half bath here. All right, so this, this is definitely a comp. So ours is definitely gonna be worth 250. I'm gonna say ours is probably 265 at the end of the day, um, ARV wise. That seems pretty safe. Now let's, what we do right now, we used to not do this. We'll look at for sales and see what's sitting because that's gonna give you a really good idea. So this one's sitting for 285. This one, nine days on Zillow. For sale, updated, 2,000 square foot. I'm sure they finished the basement there. But what I, what I really wanna look at is pending at, uh, backup offers and, and uh, backups, because this will tell me pretty much what's selling on the market right now. So we got this one, a 3-1 on Mary, same street as ours. 
It's updated, one car attached, vinyl floors, decent kitchen, definitely a little bit dated, but okay. You gotta have, so this is, a, I mean, to me, a pretty good comp. They got a, they got a finished basement. Uh, they got a sump pump, French drain system, updated furnace, but it's not that high, it's not that highly, highly updated. So I want to keep a look on this. Also, what I'm going to do here is this one has been on the market for 30 days. So probably about to close. So it got listed for sale, went contingent in three days. So that means that it's probably at a pretty good price, meaning that they probably priced it aggressively. It could go over ask. So I want to keep an eye on that one. What else do I want to look at here? And this is the amount of time. I mean, like I said, this is gonna be a longer video. You gotta spend a lot of time on this stuff. Another one, same type of house, not all that updated. Oh, it's decent. But three, two, selling for 230. This is updated. So a lot of kind of, um, a lot of stuff back and forth here. So this one went for sale in five days, went contingent. So pretty decent as well. So I'm gonna drop my ARV just to be conservative, probably to 250, 255. Let's call it 255. All right. So I'm gonna go over my deal analyzer. And if you want my deal analyzer, it is in the show notes here. Just fill out the form and it'll send it right away to you. Purchase price, I'm gonna go with zero because we have not drilled into that yet. Hopefully D on my team's not in this right now. We'll be messing up his stuff. But Okay, now that we know about the property, we know the ARV is 255, uh, I'm now gonna work backwards to figure out what my renovation is, my holding costs, and then at the end of the day, my profit margin to figure out what, what, what I wanna make to then get down to a purchase price because you need to be working backwards. So for me, anything that we buy under 300 grand right now, unless it's a full gut rehab, we wanna make at least 30 grand. So 30 grand is my absolute baseline because 30 grand can turn to 20 grand to 10 grand to zero really fast in this business, especially if you don't know how to run rehab costs, especially if you don't have the right people on your team to figure this stuff out with you. So that hopefully that's why you're here watching these videos because I'm giving you the real side of real estate. This is stuff that we do every single day. All right, so let's start outside on this house and work our way in. Let's go with the front of the house. So you see there's a shitload of pictures here. This is how it needs to be. You have to, have to, have to have a ton of pictures because if you don't, you're gonna miss things. All right, you got stone veneer on the front, vinyl siding, vinyl windows, uh, decent gutters. And if you don't, so if I, go to my, if I go to my CRM here, so if I go to my transactions, and you guys will see most of my stuff here right now. So we got 19 houses in contract, this being one of them. If I go into this, we actually got an inspection report on this. So if this was a direct to seller, so if you're trying to wholesale, highly recommend doing what's called our investor inspection. So this will also be in the show notes. This will give you ideas of exactly what's going on and get you to a perfect price. So it'll, it'll tell your roof, your siding, your windows. So I'm not really gonna go over all of this stuff, but if you want, pause it right here and read all this. This will tell you exactly the things I'm gonna be talking about and this will give you an idea of what you need to do. So if you, if you want to do this, download it in the show notes and also what you need to do is, is hire a contractor and or inspector to be able to do this for you, especially if you don't know what you're looking at. All right, so everything that we do, we do the same material list, we do the same finishes. So I, I know the way we're gonna finish this and it's gonna look a lot like the comps. So I'm gonna try and get my house to look like, let me go through the solds again. Let's look at this 255. Let's see how this, what this one look like. It's not gonna look like that, it'll look nicer. Let's go to this 270 joint again. So these aren't the nicest comps here. Let's go to the 246. Yeah, let's look at this one. This, will, this one will pretty, be, pretty much be like ours, but ours will be a little bit different. Um, we don't do like this, we don't do the gray stuff, but it'll look like this. So you'll have these shaker cabinets, you'll have granite countertops, we'll do a backsplash, uh, the flush mount light fixtures, just give you an idea. We might open up some walls if we need to. Um, just basic, but clean enough to, to, to sell the house. All right, so let's go through, and Rob, if you wanna take a seat over there, you can, if you don't wanna stand, okay. Um, we'll do new house numbers, we'll do new light fixtures. So I'm gonna write that down as I go. So I got this. 
Let me see if I have something in my drawer here. Don't know if I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count all the things that are quantifiable. So number one is gonna be my light fixtures, um, interior, exterior, lights, exterior, lights, interior. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna, I'm gonna count all those. So I have a one exterior light. Uh, windows look good, the deck looks okay. It needs probably pressure washed and painted. So pressure wash and paint the deck. I'm not gonna write everything out for you guys. Um, we probably need to put new shutters on because those are a little bit faded. Small stuff goes a long way. So four shutters. Okay, you always, when you're taking pictures, you wanna look at the neighborhood, see what the neighbors look like. All right, so we got a nice roof. We gotta definitely landscape this thing. So landscape it. Got vinyl siding, vinyl windows, gutters are in great shape. These are uh, seamless gutters. He's pointing at the ground. That typically means that it needs more grading, which is more, more dirt around the earth so there's no moisture infiltration. All right, our driveway is in pretty beat up condition. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna pressure wash it and probably do what's called a seal coat, maybe two. That'll blacken it up, fill the cracks, and make it look nice again. So you notice how I can see everything. So I don't even have to go to these houses anymore. We literally have not gone to this house. And we're gonna, and I can analyze it just as, as well right here. So we got a, a wind, uh, those are vinyl windows. Uh, this light fixture actually looks decent. I'm gonna keep it. We got our steel door here. Looked good. Um, maybe paint it if you're gonna go with painting, but to me, I'm gonna keep it. I need a deadbolt set, so a deadbolt set. Okay, in the back, we got our AC unit. We got one bad window seal, so the windows um, are vinyl, but if they start to get this pixely look, that's window seal, so that's another thing I'm gonna write, windows, one. Okay, we got our AC unit. This was built in 2016, it's 2024, so it's eight years old. That's gonna be good. Got a nice fence. Big shed, okay, our, our, our fence has fallen over, so we need to fix the fence. That might actually be the neighbors too, I'm not entirely sure. Roof looks good, chimney looks decent. Obviously the landscape is a little out of control, so we gotta fix that. Okay, we got our screened in porch. Our exterior door, so I'm gonna do a new exterior door here. You can, a lot of this stuff is gonna be determined on how you wanna do it. And this could be something that I throw away at the end if, it, if my budget gets too tight. But I'm gonna do a six panel steel door because for security wise, you wanna have something that is covered there. So that's gonna be a left hand in swinging door. Um, six panel with steel. Steel door. Um, one. Another exterior light. Okay, we got the screens that are missing throughout here. So new screens. I'm gonna pressure wash and paint this, this deck as well. And he's pointing at another window here. Was he? Yeah. So another window. And if this seems like a lot of stuff, guys, this is what you need to do. This is what me and my team do every single day when we're close on a deal. So every Thursday, me and my team, we come in and do deal analysis on, all, on most of the deals we have in contract. It takes time. So hopefully you're learning some stuff here. So we got some mildewed siding. This is vinyl siding. We're gonna pressure wash this exterior, get it back up to where it needs to be. And that's gonna be the exterior. So in recap of the exterior, that's not a whole lot. So we're gonna pressure wash the front deck, back deck, paint them both, screens on the back, back door, new exterior door. We're gonna paint the front door, I didn't mention that. Two exterior lights, um, two window seals that are broken, and pressure wash. I mean, that's pretty simple. That's a, that's a very easy exterior reno. All right, so now let's go into the inside here. So I always like to start in the basement and work my way up because that's where the, the big stuff is. If you're somewhere like Florida, Texas, Phoenix, wherever you're at, if you don't have basements, skip on this part, but structure is to me the biggest part that you need to look at. All right, so we got a furnace here. Um, I don't know how old this is. Yes, I do. 2016, so 16 is the first number. So this is eight years old and matches the AC. It's a train just like the other one. This is a high efficient. So what I'm gonna do, since it looks a little dirty in this house, I'm gonna probably service this HVAC. 
Okay, we got our water heater here. Hopefully we got a good picture of it. But looking through the basement here, you got a lot of debris, just a lot of personal property. It's an unfinished basement. So we can kind of do whatever we want with it. Our electrical panel, 100 amps. We've got our wiring coming off here. Hopefully this will uh, go, okay. So you got mostly old cloth wiring. So I'm gonna assume, remember, this is, I said this is important. This house was built in 1957. From 1940 to 1970-ish is when they used two wire electric. So I know that most of this house is gonna be ungrounded unless I see different. I didn't see different right there. And if you want an old video on that, there's more videos on my YouTube. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, so I'm gonna assume mostly ungrounded electric here unless I can be shown otherwise, but I'm not seeing that so far. All right, so we got our laundry in the basement. We got a whole bunch of debris. So what we do on these rehabs, unless we decide to finish the basement, where some of those comps had it, some didn't, um, we're doing a cost analysis on that. I'm going to um, clean it up, paint it, and just paint the ceilings, paint the floors, paint the walls, and let people decide what they wanna do with it. If I wanna finish this basement, it's gonna cost me 15, 20 grand. Painting the basement's gonna cost me 2,500. The cost difference is, is definitely, uh, it definitely varies heavily. All right, so we got our plumbing stack. So this is where your poop and pee slides down. This is cast iron. It's been opened before, so maybe there was a, um, some, some backups at one point. So you got all this stuff on the ground. So maybe this plumbing backed up at one point. I wanna definitely take a closer peek at that. The cast iron has a little bit of pinholing. So I'm gonna put something away for plumbing just so I don't get smacked in the face. So our water heater is a, or a 2009, so you got what, 15 years on that? It's right at the age where it should be going out. But to me as a flipper, if it looks good and it still functions, I'm not gonna replace it. So I'm gonna keep that, okay? So we got these built-in shelves. So I'm gonna throw away everything down in this basement. I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna make it very, very nice. Um, you got asbestos wrap on the ductwork. So we're gonna try and get rid of that or encapsulate it. Remember, this is how many pictures you need to see. Okay, we got uh, just a whole lot of stuff down here. We got our gas meter on the inside. Don't worry about that stuff. Our water meter down here. This is where the water comes in from the city. They got a water softener system, which isn't really necessary in a city, but plumbing here, you got another stack. You got galvanized plumbing here, galvanized down in. So these are probably your sinks. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that stuff. So I'm gonna update plumbing. So I'm gonna probably allocate, let's call it 2,000 to 2,500 bucks of just general rough plumbing here. We got our steel beam in the basement. And let's go back to our inspection report to see if I missed anything, but I highly doubt I did. Concrete block foundations. There was no perimeter drain or sump, but the basement was dry. Um, AC was eight, hot water tank was 15. ABS lead, recommend replacing the galvanized drains. Gas furnace, okay. Uh, ungrounded Romex throughout the house. Okay, so I pretty much hit it on the head. All right, now heading upstairs. So downstairs, unless I see otherwise, Cost-wise, that's worth spending 20 grand to finish. I'm just gonna clean it out, paint it, and call it a day. And then as we get up to the upstairs, you wanna, you wanna salvage what you can. So these, these renovations I just showed you comp-wise are not, they're not full gut rehabs. They're not doing anything high-end. I'm gonna try and keep doors. I'm gonna try and keep trim. I'm gonna try and keep whatever I can. So we got our doors here. Looks like they might've been smoking in the house because you got some of the staining, but the trim looks okay. Going into the garage. Garage looks good, clean it out, probably paint it. Looks pretty decent, so you got grounded. So another thing is you need to do a steel door from a garage that's attached to a house. So we need another six panel steel garage door, left hand in swing. Okay, so right away you have your half bath. And to me this looks like, okay, we need a light fixture, we need a mirror, we need to paint. Um, this looks like tile as trim, so we need trim. The vanity, this might be able to clean up. This is a vanity that we would maybe use, so either that or I have a smaller one that you don't have to kind of move across. So let's, let's do a vanity, let's do a toilet, let's do a toilet paper towel holder and um, a hand towel holder. Actually, you don't even need this towel holder because that's not, 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 not even needed. So, Easy cosmetic reno. 
You got ungrounded electric here, so maybe consider running some ele uh, grounded electric to a ground fault in any bathroom near water, it's important. Toilet's pretty nasty, so you're super close to your vanity here. So I would shrink that vanity up to probably a pedestal sink. Yeah, that's that's too big for here. So we'll we'll uh, we'll change that. We'll, we you need to count up all your interior doors. So I got one, two. So let me write that down. So I got interior doors. Not only are you counting them for replacement, but also if you don't need to replace them, hinges and door handles. So I got hinges, hinges. So two a, two hinges a, a door, two H, um, and then I need uh, deadbolt sets or not deadbolt sets, lock sets. So this is going to be uh, I need a locking set. So lock and passage, passage, one lock, uh, one passage there. Need some finished plumbing. Okay, we're heading straight into our kitchen. So now this is another thing. Do you replace the cabinets? Do you keep them and paint them again? To me, we haven't had that great of luck painting cabinets like this and trying to go for top ARV in this area. Now there were some that had them. I'm gonna rip it out and, um, and do new cabinets here, do granite countertops, kitchens and bath cells in the house. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we got about, I mean, it's a big, big kitchen, but we don't have to do it the exact same way that they had it. So let's assume we're gonna do about 15 cabinets. To me, that's a medium sized kitchen. So you'll know what I'm talking about here when I'm going into my deal analyzer, because we're, we're gonna do all these things. We're also gonna need countertops, a new sink faucet, a flush mount light fixture, so one light, and we already had a light in the bathroom. What else we got here? So you're gonna have a backsplash countertop. Um, through the house, we're gonna rip out all the flooring. We're gonna rip out uh, the kitchen, so a lot of demo, a lot of personal property. Uh, we got two more light fixtures, so that's four. All right, so you got your living space here heading into your dining area. So maybe consider opening this wall to kind of just give your, give your house an open, just an open feel to it instead of being so boxy. But we'll, we'll, we'll look and see if it matches into our budget. So you got our living room here. We got another light fixture. So we're at five so far. Um, you got hardwood floors that are into these laminate floors. So if you, if you rip everything up and you have hardwood, consider refinishing them, but if not LVP everything. So to me, this is a ranch style house. This probably isn't load bearing. I'm probably going to open up this wall because there's not going to be much in it. And it's going to make my house feel a lot bigger when you walk in. I'm going to paint this door. I need a new deadbolt set. Maybe actually core drill out a deadbolt and lock set. Have a nice front door. Okay, so now we're on to the other wing of the house. So this is an outlet tester. That means these outlets are ungrounded. Some nice built-ins, another light fixture. Okay, we got another locking set of door handles, but I'm gonna keep these doors. Trim looks great. Bedroom looks pretty good. The hardwood looks decent. Another light fixture. Vinyl windows. Okay, I need two closet doors. So closet doors. So that counts as two because it's a double. And that's it. Paint. Obviously, so when I'm, I'm going to say things in general. So obviously throughout the house we need floors. We obviously need paint. We need um, to paint the trim, the walls, the floor. So that stuff is in general. I mean, we're going to add all that stuff in the end. I'm just going room by room here. And highly recommend this is what you do too. Um, okay, we got another light fixture in the living room or another bedroom. All right, they have the double closet doors. We're going to paint those. I mean, this, this room is pretty damn nice. I mean, you're going to take these, this stuff off the walls. So we're going to have a general drywall punch, which is mudding down the walls to make everything smooth before you paint. So prep for paint. Um, very important to understand that too. Uh, we got two more locking sets of doors because we got three bedrooms, obviously. Another light fixture. Okay, and then we got our full bathroom here. We got this pretty ugly green tile. So to me, the walls and the ceilings are good. Toilet's disgusting. Um, vanity needs gone, it's old school, it's original. Um, maybe try and keep this tub, it's not horrible. So keep the tub, clean it, new tubs, new tile surround, 
new shower system because the three handles here, there, there's no way it's gonna work. Um, subway tile, floor to ceiling, new toilet. They have cove based trim, so we need to trim this out. We need towel bars, toilet paper, and a 30 inch vanity. We also need a new mirror, we need lights, we need an exhaust fan. So mostly full renovation on the bathroom uh, without really like blowing out all the walls. So we're 30 minutes in and we just figured out all the things that we need to do. So remember, we started out by looking at what it's gonna be worth. Now we just talked about the renovation and after this, we're gonna be going into renovation costs. Remember, I haven't talked about purchase price yet. So everything that you see from a wholesaler, as long as it's close, so now, like if this deal came in and they were asking 220 grand, I'm not gonna be able to offer that because ARV is 250 and I'm, I'm talking about a full, uh, a full cosmetic here. It's not gonna happen, right? But if they're asking 150, seems like we're playing ball. So you need to kind of have that bullshit meter right away to do more research, but it takes time. Um, and that is it picture wise. Uh, I will have the, uh, in the show notes, I'll have these pictures too. So you can kind of go through it and kind of look for yourself as well and uh, kind of do this on your own. All right, so deal analyzer. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my rehab estimator, which is here. And this is where a lot of things come in play that we talked about. So this house is um, 1,354 square feet. I, I typically round up when it comes to materials because you will have overages and waste. So interior paint job, let's call it 1400. Now that's gonna be ceilings, walls, trim, and doors. So that's everything. Um, paint doors, two. We got a front door and a back door. So these are not populating for me. There we go. Uh, paint garage floor, no. Basement ceilings, yes. Basement walls, basement floors, yes. So total paint on the house, we have 6,600 bucks. Drywall, we're not finishing the basement. Um, we're not doing any major drywall repairs other than removing that wall. So drywall punch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up to three because we're going to need to open it up, drywall those walls on the side, and the rest of it is just skim coating. We're not insulating. We're, we have a new vanity. We have a new uh, pedestal sink. I'm going to go half of that, uh, the standard lows, because those are cheaper. Towel bars, 1.5. New toilet, two, two new mirrors, one new shower system. Uh, we're gonna do a shower surround. Actually, I'm gonna do this. Actually, we're not doing a new tub. Okay, new shower surround. So that's gonna be our tile for Subway. We are going to add an exhaust fan too. So that's gonna encompass our two um, bathrooms right there. So we got 3,500 bucks for bathrooms. So we got a medium sized bath, uh, uh, kitchen, so 1.5. Remember, this is not going to be like, it's not going to be perfect. It's You're doing a lot of uh, general estimating until you get in to actually getting it in contract and maybe even purchasing it to get a full contractor bid, but this stuff is going to get you really, really close. Uh, new granite tops, I'm going to do 1.5, so that kitchen's decent, decent size. I'm going to do a subway backsplash. Uh, we're not painting those cabinets, we're going to do a medium sized kitchen. So we got another 7,500 or 7,200 bucks of cabinets, countertops and backsplash. We've got fridge, dishwasher, microwave, stove, and then we got to install them. And if I'm going too fast here, go to my other videos because I have breakdowns of this deal analyzer. I just don't want to bore you guys here. Low end LVP. So we're going to LVP this entire house, 1,400. Quarter round, that means we're, we're putting it up against the existing trim and we gotta trim it out. So that's gonna be $7,100 of, um, of flooring. We're gonna LVP the entire house, bathrooms and all. Exterior doors, um, six panel steel with frame. We got two, remember, because we have the garage door and the back door. Interior doors, we have two for the closets. Actually, no, let me do one there because that's, that's gonna be enough for closets. Um, we need um, not a sliding glass door, so door handles and hinges. So we had three bedrooms. We had two bathrooms, so that's five. I had, let's go eight for door handles and hinges. Handrail, we probably need one to the basement, and we need to trim the bathroom. Okay, so we're going to, we're not doing any framing. We're not doing any new roof system. All that stuff is good. So we're doing basic landscaping. We need to pressure wash a small house. 
We need to seal coat our driveway. We're not full gutting this to studs. We're not removing a wall, an LVL. We're just removing a non-load bearing wall. We're gonna demo bathroom, not quite to the studs, but half. Uh, we're gonna demo our kitchen and we're gonna, um, we're gonna need a 20 yard dumpster on site. And then we got a decent amount of debris here, but I think it's half of a 40 yard dumpster. So demo wise, we got about two grand. We're not doing any fascia, soffit, roof, windows. We have two, but this is for all new windows. So I'm gonna put one here because we're just gonna reseal those windows. Um, add a deck. So let me go back up to paint here because we gotta paint our decks. Let's say we got 300 square foot of, of paint for that. Actually, it's probably gonna be a little more. Let's go 500. Okay, now keep going down. We're not adding a deck, we're not doing new gutters, we're not doing glass block windows, house, house and mailbox num house numbers and mailbox, not a new garage door, no new furnace, no new AC, uh, register covers we can keep and repaint, uh, re replace plumbing stack, no, rough and half bath, no, we're not doing a full plumb, we're not doing a water heater, so let's do replace plumbing stack because we do have to do a little bit of the galvanized plumbing downstairs and we got to do a little bit of stuff down there. Uh, beam walls, no. Treat for termites, no. We're not swapping out electrical panels. All right, so light fixtures. We had at least 10. So we had 12 because we had the exterior ones as well. And we always swap our outlets and switches every single time. We're going to stage and then we're going to final clean this house. So that gets us to and a 10% contingency, so 10% on top of what we're spending, plus here. So 46 grand rehab here. So all that stuff we talked about gets us down to 46 grand. So the 10% contingency is, our budget's 42, we're adding another 10, or another 10% just for shit that's gonna happen. We open up walls, we start to get into rehab, we get robbed, whatever it is, you know, there is shit that's gonna happen. So we're at 46 grand. So now I'm to the point where I'm trying to figure out, oh, these guys are in here messing with my, messing with my deal analyzer. So estimated hold time. So we have a two week hold back on this for the sellers to get out. The rehab is gonna probably take us a month. And then I'm budgeting 45 to 60 days to sell anything right now. So let's even go 60 days. So let's say this is gonna take us four months start to finish on this project. So that's gonna be 120 days. We're gonna get a 12 and two loan. So this is really important to know because this, just to kind of back into this. So lender information is gonna be your private money or hard money loan. So assume we're getting 100% financing from a private money lender at 12% and two points. This is gonna break down exactly over this time period how much you're gonna spend on those costs. So. 12%, so assume that we buy it for 175 and we put 46 in, our loan amount is gonna be 222.4. So our interest is gonna accrue off of that number right there. So it's gonna be 120 day, or so the daily interest is $73.37 times 120, and that's gonna be what adds up down here to the bottom, okay? So the, the number here is gonna be your yearly, this is gonna be your daily. So as I move this up, so if I put 150 days, it's gonna take us five months, we pay two more grand. So it's very important to start to figure out what your timelines are gonna be for these uh, renovations. So 12 and two, our insurance is probably gonna be 1500. Our taxes, which are found on your auditor site, are 2520. Uh, utilities, we I say 150 a month at least, so let's go 1500. So at 175, we're losing four grand on this rehab. So I clearly, I, I told you in the beginning of this video, I wanna make 30 grand on pretty much every single house we renovate. So it's either we don't have our ARVs right, so actually we had 255 here. So at 255, and also I pay 2% to my realtor, 3% to the other realtor, and 1% for closing costs. So at this number here, I'm at a three grand profit. That's not 30 grand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna toy around with my purchase price, and this is what I can offer. So at the end of the day, your numbers are not gonna lie to you. All that stuff that we talked about in the rehab estimator, 
you have to do these things. Like that, that's once you're gonna get you to this final ARV. So let's go 150. So at 150 grand, I'm making 29.6. So at the end of the day, I need to offer right around 150 for this to make sense. Or my ARV, so there were comps that are higher. So it could possibly sell for 265 if we do it nice enough. So at 265, it could sell for, four, we can make 40 grand. But if it sells for 240, I'm making 15. So this is where you really need to get good at your ARV. This is where you need to get really good at your rehab costs because the other variables are always gonna stay the same. You always have to pay a realtor. You always have to pay your closing costs as a seller. You could get better money. So I could get maybe a 10% in a point. I don't know anybody that really gets that. Only a few of my friends. I don't even get that. Um, you could do it faster. So at that, so those are your variables that you can maybe mess with. But highly recommend if you're newer watching this video, 12 and 2 is going to be your standard. So if you're getting hard money, if you're getting private money, that's where you need to be. So we're buying this house actually at 156. And I think ARV at the end of the day, I think we're going to end up selling this thing for about 260 if we do all these things we just talked about. So we're looking at about a $28,000 flip, which to me is about where we need to be. So if we're in and out of this thing in about three, four months, if I'm deploying that much capital, I'm not using any of my own money. So this is just going into our system and we're gonna, and it's just gonna work itself. So this is what you need to be looking at. These are the things. So to kind of recap all of these, start with ARV, make sure you get these pictures, make sure you get a deal, my deal analyzer in the show notes, make sure if you're already in contract going direct to seller, get an investor inspection. I can't tell you how important it is to get that done. It's gonna help you out tenfold. Then. Figure out what profit margins you want. If this house was gonna be a $500,000 purchase price and take me nine months, I wanna make 100 grand. I'm not gonna make 30. I don't wanna make 30 because there's too much risk. But in this scenario, to make 28 and deploying 200 or about 200 grand for three months, that's a great return on my investment and it's not my money. So you wanna hedge your risk, but you wanna also make your time worthwhile. And um, that's, how you, that's how you evaluate a full deal. These are the things that we're working in our business pretty much every single day, evaluating deals, whether it's from wholesalers, realtors, or our own deals that we're bringing in direct to seller. And the only way to get good at this stuff is number one, having somebody guide you through it. And that's why I urge you to consider joining the Real Side of Real Estate community. You get all of these tools, you get these weekly calls that we're going through things like this. We can talk through your deals, evaluate them with you. And then beyond that, you just need to subscribe to this channel. We're gonna be doing a lot of things like this. Make sure you're getting the right information. That's all I urge you, whether it's from me or somebody else, make sure you're vetting the people, make sure they're actually doing this business. And without further ado, I really hope you enjoy videos like this. Uh, like, subscribe, share with a friend if it helped you, and start making offers on properties today using this method I just showed you. Hope it helped. That's the real side of real estate.